Hi, uh, Jean-Michel. How are you today? I'm very good, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, very good. Very good, thank you. Uh, I guess you're in uh, in Switzerland at the moment, are you? I, I do, I do. I'm uh, in my uh, home office in Switzerland and uh, enjoying the, uh, the uh, fantastic weather and quality of life here in Switzerland. That's, that's mm-hmm. good. No, that's good. That's good. Uh, well, no, really, uh, thank you very much for, for joining us on the podcast today. We've got a, a good range of questions to go through. So, uh, uh, so it's okay with you. Just start uh, firing through some of these questions, really. Yeah, sure. Go on. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So, uh, so the first one's quite a, a broad one to, to start things off with, because obviously, um, with your background being as a, a chief executive officer, and then uh, combining this with the CFO roles, and you, you serve on various company boards, so you've had a, a very broad and varied background from a, a finance and, and a senior level uh, business perspective. So, I thought it'd be a good question to ask you as a starting point, and which. Of these roles has really challenged you the most and, and, and why that has been really? Yeah, that, that's, that's a good question. I think that every role are coming where, with their uh, uh, challenges and opportunities. Uh, for me, um, first, you know, you, I'm always trying to, uh, uh, to go as far as possible with each of the roles and, and to enlarge my, my uh, my um, in, yeah, my commitment and my involvement in the roles. Um, one of the um, challenges that I see lately is in my uh, non-executive director uh, you know, or kind of roles where I'm involved in company board, which is uh, extremely uh, fulfilling. But in the same time, you need to keep a distance towards uh, what is the day-to-day operation. And I'm very much an, an operational guy. So uh, being in a, in a non-executive director position role, um, it's, it, you, you need, even though I've got strong opinion about what should be the role of, of, a, of a director, um, it's not always easy to, um, to stay away from the... Uh, uh, you know, stepping into the daily operation. That's, that's, that's um, what I see at the moment. But, you know, I had difficult time in being a CEO, I had difficult time being a CFO, you know, but it's, it's, it goes with the territory. Um, but, you know, what I see lately is, is that distance for a uh, non-executive director towards the daily operation of, of the company that, you know, you are serving on the board of. You know, that, that would be uh, my... my um, my answer to your question in, in, in you know, from my uh, latest experience. Mm-hmm. And I think obviously it's, uh, yeah, in that kind of role uh, as an advisor, as you say, you know, you're using a lot of the experience you, you've had over the years to, to bring in and, and advise um, uh, companies and indiv- individuals how to work in the best way they can. Uh, uh, but at the yeah. same time, keeping that, that, that distance. I mean, so do, how do you, how do you draw that line? I mean, I guess you, you, you know you say it's been a challenge, but how do you, um, uh, I guess, know when that, that challenge is on the horizon, and how do you deal with it, really? Well, I, I think I think it's 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 also a matter of um, bonding and and, and creating a, a a relationship with the other you know board member and with the shareholders to understand what are the eggs expecting from you because when you are a non-executive director you know, most of the time um, I mean as well I'm an independent director at, at those moments I mean it means that I'm not owning shares and I'm really contributing to with as a, as a professional board, a board member um, it's also to understand the um, the expectation of the of the of the shareholders and also to highlight to them what I see as being the challenges instead of going straight to the operation but talking to uh, to my peers on, on the board um, to highlight uh, the, the challenges that I see. So that's, that's the way I've been coping with it in the, um, mm-hmm. in the, last, in the last few um, weeks or months. Or, you know, so mm-hmm. Mm. And I guess a large part of this as well is having you know well defined and, and clear objectives, uh, and, and, and you know I suppose that's a challenge for you as well because if you're involved in a, a range of startups, you, the, the objectives clearly are, are different uh, depending on the industry, the type of startup it is, and, and, and what uh, the products or services. So how how do you go about uh, defining the the objectives uh, really when you're looking at each each project? 
Well, you know, it's, it's, um, that's an interesting one. Um, and, and, and this is where I, I, I try to combine my, my various interests. First, I'm, I'm mostly involved in technology company, either, um, you know, life science companies or, or uh, you know, impact-driven companies, you know, sustainability. And, and that's, that's, that's why I... And using technology to have a positive impact on people's life. This, that's, that's what mattered to me. And, and therefore, um, I try to, to, to strive to, or to maximize the impact it has on people's lives. So basically back to the point about growth strategies and, and how do we bring um, a product uh, to the market and technology, um, uh, or, or could a technology evolve into, into a product. And that's, that's very often what I see are the limitation of a proper governance and um, because most of the time um, board members you know, board of directors are focusing on compliance you know which is the good use of money um, from, an, from an ethical standpoint most of the time and not always as uh, how do we maximize shareholder return by bringing um, a product to to the market, and that's that's basically the way I try to define my objectives is to basically um, you know understand the technology where are they in the life cycle? Do we need to make um, a recommendation on uh, either moving to an advisory board, uh, reviewing the strategic plan? Um, do we miss some skill sets on the management team? Um, uh, do we need to develop um, uh, people in in the management team, or do we bring to, do we need to bring a new profile? And that's that's very often a challenge for startups, especially technology startups that are created by bright people, but you know most of the time they do not know what they do not know, and and the board has to really be part of um, helping those fantastic inventors, scientists, in order to develop themselves uh, beyond um, just being great scientists so that they could bring the company to, 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 to the desired outcome. And that's, that's very often what I see. Uh, uh, um, that human resource you know, point of view is, is very often missed by, by, uh, um, by the directors that are looking more towards the compliance side of it. So that's, that's a, a very interesting debate all the time. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, how do we adapt the, the skill set of the management team towards the life cycle of the product and the technology? Mm-hmm. You know, that, uh, mm-hmm. That's interesting. But you mentioned, obviously, that uh, you know, a big part of it is how you, uh, that interests you is how technology impacts on people's lives. And, and clearly, the impact of BI and data it is going to it is already making an impact on people's lives, but I think that's only going to further increase. I mean, do you, do you how do you see that that changing the let's say the scope of the finance function in the future? Do you think it, and, and when do you think it's really going to start to have a big impact? Ah, uh, yeah, that's that's um, um, there. You're touching to another, you know, core interest of mine. Certainly, when I was CFO, I was I was heavily involved in implementing um, BI tools and using data to, um, um, to really bring different perspectives to, to the business. And I think this is a key competencies uh, that the finance function needs to, needs to, to develop. Um, and, and it goes beyond finance. In one of my role, I took over a complete BI function that was in, in marketing and, and really combining people that were having a, um, a finance background, an IT background, and a, and a, and a, and a marketing background to, to create really, um, to enrich the use of, of, of data. And especially when it comes to pricing and when it comes to uh, understanding the customer pattern, uh, um, you know, there, there is, there is a, a richness of, of, of data that very often is misused in, in companies, um, uh, one of my favorite um, discussions were always we say so the best people because they have um, a key, they have more contact with um, 
the customers than the sales rep do. Mm -hmm. okay. And so when you're talking to, uh, and, and, and this is very often a, a, a function which is misregarded, in my opinion, um, and that's, the, that's, that's uh, where you've got um, a lot of opportunity, opportunity to create fantastic data sets um, to, to run uh, the business in, 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 a, in a very interesting way. And a, a finance leader, in my opinion, has to look into all those data um, which is customer behavior beyond just finance, uh, in my opinion, because that, that, that's very close to them. They are enforcing those, but where is the invoice coming? Is, is by those interactions with the customers. And, and that's, that's very, very often at the customer sales or the desk, or today on, on what is done online, because there is a lot of uh, orders that are placed online. And, and that's, that's critical to understand the behavior of customers when they go online or what they are talking to a sales agent um, at the customer and you know, at the sales of the desk. And I don't know if this is answering your question, but the, this is this is clearly um, for me a, a, a key responsibility of the finance function um, to go beyond the financial transaction data to un to understand um, the the pattern of, of information and, and um, that's that's critical to, to give sense behind the number. Okay, so that's 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 clear. That's clear. To me. Yeah. Is, yeah. is that answering your question? Is that is that? Yeah, no, that does. That does. And, and I think it's interesting because I mean I think you know the, the impact of, of BI and data. I mean it, it's. It, it, as you mentioned, it, it's not just related to finance. I mean, it covers all all disciplines and, and business as a whole. And we, I mean, we see it in the in the recruitment industry. I think you know that these days, if a company advertises a role on, online, um, it's really quite often now behind data systems in the background that's doing word matches on people's CVs. You have chat box that's yeah. now can set up interviews and so on. But the but the real I guess the real value is actually in in in, in going beyond that and understanding the people more uh, and uh, trying to to then manage the recruitment process from uh, the start of the process through to the offer and any counter offers that go on and, and that's something that clearly you know the, the behind data at the moment at least can't can't do and I think it, it, again it comes down to the the personality and, and, and the building relationships, uh, whether it's whether it's recruitment, whether it's finance, sales, marketing, supply chain, uh, it really pushes, I think, uh, humans now to a, a different level and, and really on the uh, yeah the, the business relationship side of things. But a bit of the challenge is, I, I think that the certainly the younger generation now, uh, that, that's an area where they're probably, what I've seen is probably not quite as good at because they're used to just spending their, their lives on, uh, you know, on WhatsApp, on email, on social media. And, and the relationship building is now, um, I feel, a bit harder for them to do because they're just not as used to doing it. But, uh, but I think it's a bit of a, a challenge. We'll, we'll see how things go in the next uh, number of years. But, it's, uh, but certainly I think yeah. there's, there's a place for both. I think behind data clearly is going gonna, is gonna to impact uh, everybody's lives um, um, you know, uh, and, and I think actually, but, it, but it's not going to still replace the the need for uh, uh, the consulting approach, whether it's a business partner or, yeah. or whatever it may be. Really, I, I think that the challenge will will the challenge that will accelerate it is what to do with the wealth of data that are available. Okay? So I think that already, uh, you know, if you take 10, 15 years ago, you had already so much data that were not in use and that were, uh, you know, we have been part of business turnaround just by tapping into those data and, and, and looking at how to triangulate information that were not triangulated usually because they were in different pockets of the, of the organization. Um, that was already the case 10, 15 years ago. I've, um, I think that my concern today is that there is so much more data being recorded, you know, so much more um, that I, I believe that that waste of data is, is, is going to go increasing and that the companies that are able to um, handle or to manage that wealth of data and to make sense out of it uh, in a meaningful way are, are going to be a winner. 
And that's that. That's very clear. But it's 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 more it's 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 more about you know what do we do with all those data, and then you need to have the the critical sense to analyze those data, and that's 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 also where um, you need to have um, more and more effort and resource dedicated to analytics. Mm. Okay. So that's 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 absolutely key. I think that this is one of the key winning. Uh, skills in the next in the next years. You know, it's already the case, but I think it's going to go increasingly in, in, a, in a fashion that mm. that we might not comprehend completely yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. The ability the ability to sort and to treat and to to manage data. I think, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely amazed to see you know when when you take junior analysts that you're asking those days in my time that was okay. You need to be able to handle Excel. <laughs> Today it's you need to be able to handle you know, Excel is a given. You need to be able to to code in Python, right? mm-hmm. which is which is which is very different. You know, I see my kids; they are they are requested to be able to code. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that is good. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, uh, in, in analyst position. So mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I don't know if this is. Um, I think I think you know, you, you 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 might tell better than I do, but I think that 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 skill set of Sorting and understanding the structure of data and, and how to clean data and how to, to have proper master files are going to be, is going to go increasingly. That's mm-hmm. going to go increasingly. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, related to this uh, as well, I mean, we're talking a bit about, uh, I suppose, tomorrow's world in many ways. And, uh, you know, I just wonder from your point of view, uh, what, what you've got lined up, you know, so now you've had uh, quite a, a busy few years. I mean, in terms of the projects you have for the next 12 months, uh, what, what uh, exciting things have you got coming up for yourself? Well, you know, you know I've, 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 been, um, I've, been, I've been recently joining uh, MMA companies. I do, um, you know, Managing partner for a uh, mini firm, Actoria, you know, in Switzerland, and we are we are present in, in most of Europe. Um, uh, so certainly, it's to continue to to to, to develop my um, uh, portfolio there. Um, you know, I'm, I'm helping them to uh, build their um, life science and technology vertical, uh, which is fascinating. So we'll see if, if this is going to. Um, to um, to contribution, but that's that's something I'm I'm dedicating a lot of time there. Um, uh, certainly, you know, looking at different um, uh, board of director, I think that this is very complementary to what I do as an MD um, leader. But also, um, uh, you know, I, I think it's important to uh, to look at. To look at it, you know, to keep enlarging my, my perspective, and then I've got two other projects. First, I would like to to exit one of the business that I've been creating a few years ago. So that's that's clear. So I would like to uh, <laughs> to to, <laughs> to grab the fruit of of the investment that I've done. So I'm very heavily involved in uh, in that one. Um, and and the um, the other one I, I would like to I'm, I'm looking at. Um, I'm, I'm working on a digital platform to support the funding of um, of um, young technology startups that have um, uh, uh, you know to accelerate their the, the reach to market. You know, very often you know, those technology startups have very expensive technology and which represent capex for their customer they are not always which is often a, a barrier because you know companies and customers are reluctant to put heavy capex into a technology that have not necessarily demonstrated their efficiency and so what we are looking at is is to, to create a platform that could that could um, operate on a, on a token base, you know, tokenization of the of the asset and, and profit sharing base. So we'll see probably more to come on that one. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's one of the projects that I've got and that I've got for the time being. That that's good. But you know, MA MA is, is going to be the, the, the bread and butter uh, <laughs> the bread and butter on that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, it sounds like your dog agrees as well. That's uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the dog is there. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the things I wanted to ask you about, because it touches on some of the things uh, we've been covering already in terms of, 
know, when you when you uh, invest or when you've been a, a CFO, you most of the time you've had you know people reporting into you and teams around you. And uh, I think one of the, the the challenges that most managers have is how to get the most out of their out of their teams. So I thought, given the opportunity of having you on the podcast today, I'd just get your your thoughts on this, really. So I mean. I guess people have different opinions on this. So whether you, you focus on, uh, you know, looking at enhancing people's strengths or, or trying to develop people's weaknesses. So, I mean, is, is there a, uh, an approach you, you tend to have on that uh, point yeah. of view? I, I, I see that in a, in, in a, it has to be a, a balance because, of course, people value is coming from their strengths, okay? But an overused strength is... is um, is creating a lot of tension, okay? Um, and uh, um, the areas of weakness, if they are not addressed, they are, they are creating roadblocks. So you need to work on the blind spot of people. You need, to, you, need to, you need to create awareness of what the blind spots are, um, either on, on, on either side, either on the weakness area or in the overused trends. And, and that's, that's uh, certainly what up been enjoying doing gaining seniority is to be more a mentor than a manager okay so that's that will be uh, um, where my my um, interest and my strengths were you know um, um, and, and and therefore to to push people to use their strengths but to balance it by being aware of their weakness and understanding when they were overusing their strengths um, you know, someone who is overly enthusiastic, okay? So he's, if he's overly enthusiastic and, um, and do not understand that people are, are um, more reflective or, you know, take more time to be enthusiastic about, about something, he might create tension into the organization in a way which is unbearable. Okay? And so you need, to have, you, you need to prevent that. And, 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 that that would be my 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 answer is you know you need to, you need to make people understanding their strengths and the weakness and make sure that they are not overusing it and the the strengths and that they are aware of their weakness so that it's not coming roadblock. Um, one thing is clear as well is that um, you know I've always tried to give you know chance to people you know one chance second chance third chance you know and to help people because I believe that everybody is having a value. Um, but one, one thing is clear is that you, you, you need to act swiftly on, on people that are cancer to one organization, right? And so on people that are, you, you know, that, that's something that um, um, I, I'm always, you know, always learning is, you know, you need to act on people um, um, to make sure that this is not impacting negatively the rest of your organization. And, and that, that's unfortunate, but this is also the responsibility of the leader. You need, you need to do both you need to develop people, but you need to protect the people as well from from you know a negative atmosphere uh, created by by individuals that, that that should be that would be better in another environment. You know, mm-hmm, it's, mm-hmm. It's, uh, meaningful. What I say. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that, that makes sense. I mean, because I know one of the the big challenges that a lot of companies have is not well, it's not necessarily just recruiting the best people, but it's actually retaining them. And I think the, yeah. uh, you know, I think um, people uh, obviously they give more loyalty uh, and uh, um, and commit the, the the time more to organisations where they they've got the you know the, the buy-in from the manager they can see that see the, the yeah. manager is giving them a lot of help and advice and trying to trying to develop them and, and i think nowadays probably more than than it has been in 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 the past you know the, the, i think people are attracted not probably less so to salary and more actually to the uh, to development and, and, and what they can oh, learn from the manager and the teams around them and I think that's uh, yeah so I think it's a good a good way of, uh, yeah. of looking at these things really I, I, th- I think it's, it's, it's really you, know, you need you need to you, you need to build for the long term okay? and, and sometimes it, it requires to, 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 to leverage between salary and development and, and this is something that I've always been advocating is you know always give more 
um, you know, you, you will you will always get the credit of it. And if this is not in this company, that's going to be the next one. That's very clear. Mm -hmm. Well, I know that uh, one thing that's uh, a lot of, well, nearly everybody struggles with, whether they're a, a CFO or whether they're a junior accountant, is uh, the, the management of time, I guess. You know, it's one thing that we all have equal measure of and uh, try to focus and uh, prioritize the you know, the right things, really. I mean, I, I thought it'd be interesting to get your thoughts on that, you know, I mean, how, you know, over the years, if there's any systems or uh, uh, great ideas you, you've had that can help people to manage their, their time and focus the best way possible, really. Well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very bad at managing my time in the sense that it was, you know, I've got very few boundaries in between you know, uh, working time and, 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 and family time or leisure time. And that's, that's unfortunately um, not, you know, home office, you know, with, with COVID, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. not helping too much. <laughs> um, but what, what, what I try to do is definitely um, to have a structure. Okay, so we've got a routine. So uh, every morning is, you know, uh, exercise, uh, meditation, eventually, if I've got time. Um, um, and it goes through the day, trying to stick to my schedule. And the evening before to leave the office is always clean desk and preparing the next day. Okay, so I'm taking my calendar and I'm checking what is um, on the next day and the day after, eventually. But certainly, I'm, 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 I'm leaving my office with... I know that I've done today what has to be done tomorrow uh, and what I need to finish and priorities and to rearrange my priority based on the thing that happened today. Sometimes, you know, you, 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 you have been caught up into the action and something that was supposed to be done today has not done. So if I could not um, finish it, you know, on time to be, to be efficient, uh, it happens sometimes. Um, um, I reorganize my time for the coming days to make sure that this is delivered. Um, so that that's routine. That routine has helped me to be efficient. And it's it's it's, it's not you know um, uh, I'm starting every day at eight or finishing up at, at at seven. You know it's not that way. You know starting at eight is usually the case um, of working. So it means you know waking up at six thirty or something doing gym and, 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 and meditation and breakfast and then and then uh, um, in the evening that, that really depends on, on the way the, 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 the day goes. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, no, it's it's interesting. I mean, because the uh, yeah, getting the exercise done. I think first thing in the in the morning is uh, is definitely the the best time to do it. So, I mean, I, you you may have heard of this book, the the Miracle Morning, but uh, yeah. it's quite uh, yeah, quite a popular book uh, uh, at the moment. And and I think you know, it's one of those things that, that, that often if you if you don't do that first thing in the morning, then what what certainly what I tended to find was that. It, you know, there were a lot of days where you, you, the days just run away from you and the exercise was always a thing that got put off. And then before you know, it's uh, a few days ago by and all you've done is really, yeah. you know, uh, yeah, go to work and, and go home, you know. So I think it's, um, yeah, it's important to get that done there first. And then, uh, and, and I think it, it gets you going for the rest of the day, really. Yeah. Gets your mind, and, uh, and it it has to be a routine that fits your schedule. You know, one of my challenges was I've always been traveling ex extensively. When I say extensively, it has been sometimes very extensive and and you know you, you, you could not always have your, your gear to go running or or you know um, sometimes you didn't have enough place in your baggage to take everything for two weeks or something <laughs> so, <laughs> so I, I, I've tried to, to give up routine that were um, workable everywhere okay so something that you could do in your room or you could go to the gym or not but most of the time you know it, it, it's not not doesn't have to be long, but if, you know, 15 minutes in your hotel room systematically, mm -hmm. it's good enough. You know, you, you mm -hmm. just step planks and stuff. You know, that's that works. Mm -hmm. um, and so you don't need you don't need to plan it. This is this is organized. You know, and, and you could do it at, at, at home or you could do it uh, when you're traveling. It doesn't matter. This is systematic and that works. Mm -hmm. so that, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not. You know, don't get me wrong. It's not it's not crazy intensive exercise, but this is this is uh, 
10, 15 minutes of, of you know, good exercise and you feel better, you've, you've done it and, and this, this is keeping you in shape and, and awake and uh, off you go. Mm-hmm. No, like I said, I think if, uh, you know, the, I think you tend to find the people have got that, that sort of balance and a bit of structure there, then it, it just it helps them a lot in their, you know, their working day. And, and I think it helps them be the, the best they can, they can, they can be, uh, you know, at work and uh, at home as well at the end of the day. So, uh, mm-hmm. and I guess, you know, sort of linked to this and, and, and a few of the other questions we've been talking about. So, um, you know, obviously um, we, we've talked a bit about how you manage teams and, and how you manage your, your, your time to get yourself the best you can be. So, I mean, in in terms of the, the the people in your in your teams, I mean, how is there a sort of a plan that you've 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 um, uh, picked up over the years in terms of the best way to develop your people and, and to get them to perform as well as they, they possibly can? Um, so I've I've always tried to build diverse team. So I think that diversity is extremely important. Um, not only gender, but 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 um, you know culture. Okay, so I think that this is this is something which I think is, is extremely uh, rich and rich for everybody. Because I think that this is this is uh, rich. and and um, what is important is to um, always start with having people to be able to work together. Okay, so to understand, you know, back to my point about uh, strengths and weakness. Um, um, people have to understand that they have weakness and that everybody is having strengths. Okay, so it's, it's, that creates a sense of respect um, and that, that uh, um, they, they need to, you know, I'm, I'm really insisting on, you know, teamwork um, and, and uh, respecting the others. I think that this is, this is clear. And then you go into the personal development, which is really a, a one-on-one thing. Uh, based on what the aspiration of that individual is, and um, based on, you know, for me, for me, this is a a moment that I learned to cherish is those those discussion about what are people going to do, what what do they need from a leader to to grow further, mm-hmm. and and um, that's really something that I that I like and it's it's a, a kind of tailor made program based on what is offered in, in a given company because you, you you need to be fair towards the people and, and so you, you need to give them the maximum chance but you need you need to you need to stay in a framework kind of um, um, and sometimes you know sometimes you give opportunity for a training to someone sometimes is just participating in a project um, or a coaching program. Uh, um, it's it's important, and and um, I, I think that you really need to um, give to everybody uh, the the opportunity to to develop himself or herself to the best way. Even even you know. People that are backbone to an organization, okay. So people that are really the one that are you know, not, you know, the I flyer into brackets, but the people that are making things work in an organization. You need to share with that as well, because those are the ones that are helping the others to develop as well. And so you need you need to create that that atmosphere that everybody is having a value and, 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 and to respect and to, to have a plan for everybody. Um, and, and most importantly, you need to have come to discussion about people, or with people. You need, you need to have sometimes difficult discussion with people. You need to, they might agree or disagree, um, but, but you know, I've, I've, seen, I've seen so many times, or too many times, people that, there were, that, that were not confronted with their own limitation by not having received a proper feedback from their management advice, you know, just because they were afraid to give that feedback or because they were not uh, willing to articulate it or whatever. But, you know, it's, it's a, uh, been, uh, in, in one of my role, I was, I was the, uh, the, 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 the chair of the CFO council of a large organization. Um, and it, it was, in, I was in charge of, you know, that CFO council was in charge of developing 
talents and organizing or organizing the slating for the the, open, the, the job opening. And so every year we had, you know, a few times a year we had review of the pool of associates we had to 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 to, to leave up. And very often you had reflection about, you know, but that individual, what is the discussion that you had with him? Because it's it's difficult to see that that individual have been slated for different positions, but never got the job. Mm. What is happening? You, you know, it, it's a talent. Okay, fine. You, you say that this is a talent, but why he or she did not get the job? And mm. you need to understand that, and you need to get the feedback, and you need to, very often I realize that it, because they have not been receiving a proper feedback mm. from the line management for years. And that's, that's something that uh, is critical. It's, you, you need to be providing that, that, that feedback to people. You know, sometimes mm. difficult discussion, but the, it's, personally, I've been, I've been growing the most when I was confronted with my own limitation <laughs> by, by you know, management. And, and due to my nature, it was sometimes brutal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is you know with, with flying doors and stuff. But you know, it's 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 where it's it's where you are growing the most, and you need you need to, you need to value those discussions, and 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 you need to create a context where it's it's okay to disagree, and it's but you you need to create you need to create that that culture where feedback is essential, instant feedback. You know, that's 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 what I. I try, um, mm-hmm. whatever the size of the organization. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, it's really, it's true. I mean, I think there's a few things there that I, uh, yeah, I really agree with. I mean, I think, you know, you mentioned about, uh, you know, the difficult discussions and, and having those. I mean, I think that the difficult conversations are always the ones that are, both sides get the most value out of provided they're done in, in the right way. And I think, uh, um, you know, going back to what we were saying earlier, you know, what a lot of people do is they want to join organizations with managers who are going to develop them. And, and, and sometimes that means managers have obviously got to have that, that discussion that they probably, that is a bit uncomfortable, but, uh, but at the end of the day, the, yeah, they'll probably become a better manager as a, as a result, but they'll also have a better uh, team member as a result as well because they'll understand and and and, um, uh, and respect the manager more as a result of this as well. I think it's that I kind of I think that fine line between realizing that you're not there to be everybody's you know best friends. You know there is that you, you're there to be the manager and develop them as a person. Uh, if you, you get on with the individuals, that's great, but you're not. Uh, you know, there to be everybody's friends. That you, you, yeah, you're trying to 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 improve them as an individual uh, in on the job side, and and hopefully, you know, get on with them as well at the same time. You know, and that's, uh, you know, and, and and I guess it leads quite nicely actually into the uh, into the last question I had for you actually in terms of the. Um, on the mentoring side, I mean, yeah. because of the work you've been doing over the years, there's probably a number of people that would uh, pick you out as a mentor yourself. But I wondered, uh, you know, who, who maybe has been somebody who's really influenced you and who you class as a mentor and, uh, um, and, and you know, what, what, you, what you gained from that experience, really? Well, I mean, you know, it's interesting. I, I, I believe, or, you know, I, I had... I had I've been very lucky to have to have a few a few mentors in my life, um, and sometimes you know people that didn't recognize as mentor, you know, and, and sometimes I've been um, uh, wasting opportunity of people that were mentoring me and and, and, and and I did not realize. I've been I've been extremely lucky to have people that have been trusting me and and advising me and and giving me. A chance, even in difficult time. Um, I'm, I'm really, really, really grateful uh, for those guys. I, I would say, you know, I've got, I've got a few. Um, one of my um, uh, CFO boss when I was, uh, you know, Johnson and Johnson. I think that a guy like uh, Tom Fowler, who was a CFO for. Uh, the Etikanendo surgery franchise at the time. Um, I don't know exactly what is the status of that. I think they have merged with Etikanendo, but Tom, Tom, Tom has been a very loyal guy uh, to me and, and good mentor. Uh, and as well, at, um, on the more uh, conflictual side, I think that um, 
someone like uh, Lars Peter Arbing, who was the uh, uh, EMEA president for Etikonendo at that time. Um, even though Tom, you know, Tom Fuller, I, I was with him already at court, so I've, I've, we have been a long way together, Tom and I, on that regard. He you know, has been a very good person to me, sometimes conflictual, huh? you know, don't get me wrong, but um, very uh, loyal. Um, and uh, Lars Peter has been the most um, challenging. You know, I think that he, he came at a time in my life where um, I had to be shaken up. <laughs> and he did. He did. <laughs> I think everybody has those times in their career and life at some point. And <laughs> and, 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 and I, I, you know, I, I had other, you know, you know, certainly um, uh, uh, Jean-Luc Lemercier was uh, VP uh, for um, the cardiology business at, at Cordis. Was uh, I, I could I could I could mention a lot. Um, uh, um, you know, and, and, you know and, uh, people that have helped me to grow, um, certainly, you know, probably had more than I deserve. <laughs> 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 well, no, but it, it, does, it does come back to what exactly what you were saying earlier, you know, I mean, you mentioned, uh, you know, the people who really stand out to you, the ones that... Uh, you know, push you and uh, challenge you at the right times. And, and I can yeah. imagine some of these conversations probably weren't, you know, very comfortable for them. It's probably yeah, weren't for you, but it, it's like they stand out to you and, uh, and, and, and you've remembered them, you know, so it, it goes to show the, these, these conversations, uh, they do work. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but for, for me, you know, the, you know the, the, fact, the fact that they had all those great people that help you to grow when, when sometimes I've been a difficult one to handle, uh, is, is pushing me as well to, to make sure that I'm not giving up on, on, on people as well because people have not given, given up on me. Um, so I, I, it's my responsibility as well to not give up on people you know, mm. that are in my, in, my, in my area of influence, I would say. I think it's important. I think it's important. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. Well, no, it's been really great to, to speak to you today, Jean-Michel. I really appreciate your time going through this. And I think there'll well, be... We really appreciate the exercise as well. Yeah. Oh, it's been really good. I think there'll be a lot of, uh, a lot of interesting things that the listeners are going to be able to, yeah. to, uh, to learn from. And, uh, and I think uh, there'll probably be quite a few of them that will want to potentially reach out to you. So, I mean, what's the best way that uh, the listeners can uh, reach out to you, Jean-Michel? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, fully, I'm fully transparent on LinkedIn. I think this is, it has become a fantastic... Um, tool um, and, and I'm uh, using it daily myself to either follow up on people or to stay in contact with them or to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to keep informed about what's going on and then from there I keep, I keep uh, um, searching on you know, digging further but you know people could always contact me on LinkedIn you know just at a small note you know, you know um, I would like to have a chat with you you know I've heard you on, on podcast or you know I've seen that article from you or you know, whatever um, always welcome. Mm-hmm. Well, that'd be great. And obviously, when uh, with the podcast posts, we'll make sure that we all link into that, so people will be able to click into your uh, profile uh, link to the the podcast as well. So that'll be uh, make it easy for them to connect with you. Also, so um, yeah, just once again, thanks a lot for your time, Jean Michel, and uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the day. And we'll obviously, yeah, we'll keep in touch from here. Yeah, thanks a lot, Paul. Have a good one. Take Thank care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye.